I just spent the entire weekend at my cabin running my refrigerator and a few other things entirely off of Jackery's new 3600 Home Power Plus. My question is, can I run my entire cabin off of this new Jackery for an entire weekend without any issues? I'm going to show you exactly what I found, give you the, the pros, the cons, the whole nine yards, everything that happened, and tell you whether or not this Jackery would actually run my cabin or maybe yours an entire weekend, and is it really worth the money? Let's just get right down and dirty. Let's talk about the good stuff, talk about the bad stuff, and so just to be clear, Jackery did send me this power station to review, so thank you very much, Jackery, for that. But as always, my one caveat that I always insist on having is that I am honest in my reviews. And folks, you're going to get some honesty today, so stick around. Let's get right down to what happened this weekend. And some of it was, <laughs> well, it's interesting. Stick around. Now, my first impression of this unit was <laughs> it's pretty substantial. It weighs 77 pounds. And in fact, when it was delivered, I had the FedEx guy loaded in the back of my truck for me so I didn't have to pick it up because I'm not supposed to pick up 77 pounds and the box apparently weighed something like 85. So it's a little bit more than I'm supposed to pick up. And when I got all the way up to my cabin, after I might add a pretty rough ride, and in fact, on the way up to the cabin on that last three mile stretch, I was kind of wondering, will this power station take the kind of beating that it's getting right now? Now it was in a box and well packaged by the, by the manufacturer, but folks, I mean, it's getting bounced around in the back of my pickup. And I was kind of worried I had some cinder blocks back there and chainsaws and all kinds of stuff. So I'm driving up this bouncy road to my cabin and I'm thinking, well, Jackery, we're going to find out whether or not this thing survives. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it did. But when I got up to the cabin, the first thing that, you know, I had to figure out was how to get this out of the back of my pickup and onto the deck of my cabin. So I grabbed my tractor that already had the pallet forks on it, put a pallet on it, stuck it up to the back of the truck right on top of the tailgate, and then basically rolled and flipped the box up onto the pallet and then used the tractor to set the pallet up onto the deck and then pulled the, the box off the pallet onto the deck where I could open it up and get this unit out. And then the nice thing is that it's got wheels and it's got a really cool handle that pulls all the way up and I was able to just turn it and drag it into the cabin. Now I had to kind of bump up the step to get in and that's going to come into play later when I decided to do some pictures in my yard and had to drag it up some concrete steps into the upper section of my backyard where I wanted to take the pictures. <laughs> I would say, Jackery, maybe put like a, a plate on the back right there, a rub plate, because, and, and don't put your specs right there because people like me are gonna rip them off. Anyway, let's get back to it. Now this thing weighs 77 pounds, it has four 120 volt plugs on the front and it has a 30 amp 120 volt RV type plug that you could use to plug into your house or your RV or whatever. So that's pretty good. It's got four USB ports, two USB-C and two USB-A's. So that's pretty nice. There is no cigarette lighter port. There's no light on it. This is not your typical, I'm going to go camping and take this with me power station. This is really designed for you at home. You need to run some things during an outage. Will this do it? Well, we're going to find out, but that's what it's designed for. Now it also has an AC expansion port on the side. It has a DC expansion port. Now with this unit, you can expand it to 21 kilowatt hours or 21,000 watt hours. And you can parallel two of the units together to get 240 volts and a whole lot more power. So pretty expandable. Now it also has two solar ports and those ports are 500 watt ports each for a total of 1000 watts. And then finally you've got your AC plug that you would use to charge it up and this does have a 1700 watt fast charging capacity and the cable although very sturdy is basically the same kind of cable I often talk about which is your basic 15 amp 120 volt plug that you could use in your computer, your TV, whatever. I don't like it when companies use special cables that you can only get from them. Jackery has not done that, so kudos to Jackery. Now, the other thing that they sent with this for me to test out was their Solar Sega 500 watt bifacial solar panels. 
And right now they got a deal going on. So when I looked up the price of the unit with those solar panels, I was kind of impressed. So we'll talk about that later. By the time I was able to get completely unloaded, moved into the cabin, generator running, and the Jackery charging up because it was only at 26%. And I got it up to 100% before 10 o'clock at night. And that's when I started my test. I plugged in the refrigerator and I went to bed. Cabin was warmed up, it was time to go to bed. I went to bed, I went to sleep, and I'm still running the cabin off of everything except the refrigerator. I was running it on the Jackery. And one of the reasons I did it that way is that I've tested with other power stations the same way. Now, by the next morning at 5.20 a.m., the Jackery was sitting at 89%. I thought, well, wow, that's pretty good. And it said it was only running for an hour and a half. And I thought, how's it only running an hour and a half? I put it on at 10 o'clock last night, and it's 5.20 in the morning. That's 7 hours, 20 minutes, unless my elementary math is somehow changed. Well, then I thought, I'll bet they've got a setting. Sure enough, it had an auto shut off after a couple hours. Now, the nice part is that it obviously turned back on because it had been running since four o'clock in the morning and I wasn't up at four o'clock in the morning to turn it on. So that mode obviously will shut off if something, in this case, the refrigerator, doesn't try to draw power over a specific period of time, in this case, two hours, shuts the inverter off until something tries to put a demand on it so I turned that off because I don't want that. Once I turned it off, all was good in the world. Okay, so we're at 89%, so what do I do? Well, I've got my camera that needs to have its battery charged up. I've got some GoPro batteries that need to be charged up. And then I realized my laptop was dying, so I plugged my laptop in. So I got all these things running off of the Jackery, but running this Jackery just for that seven and a half hours had me kind of pondering whether I should consider upgrading some of my components so good job, Jackery, for waking me up to the fact that maybe the things I use could be more efficient because that Jackery is very efficient. I'm impressed. Now, at this point, I thought, you know what? The sun's up. I'm getting some sun. They sent these bifacial solar panels. Why don't I take them out and set them up? But I had to set up a pallet with a 55-gallon drum because, because there's six 85-watt bifacial panels. Now, I knew that's not the most ideal situation, but I thought, let's throw them up here and see what we get. 455 watts, even though they're dirty. And I just went about my day. I had lots of work to do. So I jumped on my tractor and I ran around and I kicked up a lot of dust, I might add. And then I would take breaks at different times. And I went into the cabin at one point and all of a sudden I hear this crash and I think, oh no, what happened? Did a cow go run over the solar panels? <laughs> So I go out and there's the solar panels laying in the dirt. Now what I have for dirt, by the way, is something we call moon dust. And here's those brand new 685 watt bifacial solar panels laying in the moon dust in the dirt with the rocks, with a pallet on top of some of them. And I'm thinking, oh, Jackery's not gonna like this. <laughs> I thought, how am I going to get good production out of these panels with the scratches they've got to have now? So here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not overly happy. Let me just say that, folks. And I, so I lean everything back up and I'm looking at the panels and I'm going, oh, there's scratches on them. But out of curiosity, I thought, well, let me just, just wipe one of those scratches. And they look like scratches. So I went and I wiped one and it wiped off wasn't actually a scratch. None of them were that I could see. It was just lines created by grass or something else, very, very little grass, it, from the moon dust. That was it. There, there was, there were, no, there were no scratches that I could tell. And I thought, you gotta be kidding me. How did I get, how did I get that lucky? I'm not gonna say that these panels are tough as nails or anything else because they seem kind of fragile. But they did get knocked over, I think, by the wind, not a cow. There were no cow prints around, although there often are. Something knocked them over. I think it was the wind. And they had a pallet, plastic pallet land on them. You know, not ideal. They just got dirty. And I was able to rub them down. Now, cleaning them out there was almost impossible. I tried it several times. <laughs> Never got them fully clean. And then I, I could see the wind moving the panels just as I had them leaning against the cabin. And I thought, okay, come on, 
star head. You can't leave them like this. So set them up with their, they, they give you uh, hinges basically that you can use to hinge them all together. So they, they fold up nice and tight to put in the bag and then you can unfold them and lay them on the ground facing east and west and get power out of them that way. So that's a good setup for, you know, people that are portable or you don't want to mount them on something. Mounting would be the best option. Mounting them on like a fence type structure off the ground facing east and west, that'd be perfect. It was actually very easy to put their setup together. And it folds up nice and goes in the bag and, and it folds out and you can then lay it down on the ground and now you've got panels that are collecting power. Granted, not the best thing to do in the dusty conditions at my cabin this time of year. Not only were they now dirty because they all crashed into the ground and didn't get scratched up but got really dirty and I had a heck of a time trying to clean them. I even used some actual good quality window cleaner. Just, I couldn't get the dust off of them. But the weather wasn't cooperating either. I had rain clouds coming and going throughout the day and there was just no way I was gonna get nice solar production out there. And believe it or not, by just before three o'clock in the afternoon, they were at 97%. And by the time I went in, cause I decided to heck with it, I'm not getting any more solar production. We're gonna run all night long again and see how it goes. Well, it was at 77% when I left the cabin without putting any more charge on it again. Running it from about three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday until about 10 a.m. on Sunday from 98% to 77% during that time running that refrigerator. So the refrigerator used a total of 720 watt hours over the course of that 36, 37 hours. Well, that means in a 48 hour weekend, two full days, if you started it Friday night, went all the way to Saturday night and then all the way to Sunday night, you're only gonna use about one kilowatt. And interestingly enough, because of the inverter on this power station being pretty efficient, you're not using up a lot of the power. So having two solar panels with the extensions so that you could put a thousand watts back in it during the day would be good. Now, could it run the rest of my cabin? Well, here's the interesting thing. I did the math on everything that I run at the cabin when I'm up there. And outside of my refrigerator or any power tools or anything else, if I'm just hanging out at the cabin, running some lights, all that kind of stuff, I'm only using from sundown to sunup about 100 watt hours. So yes, it could do it. Lots of pros. I like this unit. I think it's a great unit. Now, some of the cons on the unit are that if you do extend it, you don't get more solar from the expansion batteries. A lot of companies put solar charge controllers in their expansion batteries. Jackery does not apparently, at least not for this unit. And that means that you would be limited to the thousand watts of solar on the main unit when trying to charge off the AC port in fast charge mode, which is 1700 watts. If you plug in solar, which I did, and you're getting you know, a couple hundred watts off the solar, it will add those together. And even when I got up to as much as 400 watts of solar, it was adding them together, except that it stopped and it did something else, which uh, they call uh, energy priority or something like that, where it prioritizes the solar over utility and it steps the charging down. Now, it was at 83 to 85% charged at that point. So it's possible it was stepping down the charge simply because it was close enough to 100% that it, it wanted to slow things down a little bit. The BMS could have done that, but frankly, I saw it and I went, why am I only getting 1600 watts of charging when I've got solar connected and I'm connected into the grid? Should be getting a lot more. Now I asked their chat bot if you could get 2800 watts while connecting up solar and utility at the same time and it said I don't know <laughs> and I thought okay you're the Jackery chatbot so I, I kind of gotta gotta give them a well I suggest that they improve that and it says it'll charge it in two hours well two hours would be 1500 watts plus so yeah I know I can get 1500 watts I can get that off utility but if I add a thousand watts of solar I couldn't I get it charged up in say an hour and a half or an hour and a quarter I'd like to see a little more flexibility on solar. And so 
I'm okay with the DC8020 inputs to a degree, but honestly, I'd rather see an XT60 or an XT90. I know Jackery likes their DC inputs, but I would rather see an XT60 or 90 where I could put more amps in on that input and a charge controller that would allow more. In fact, you put MPPT controllers on those external batteries, Bob's your uncle, you got the best tuned out there, but you gotta have more solar. Anyway, folks, there you have it. I like it. I think it's a great unit. They are on sale right now. I want to say it was $21.99.99, I believe, for the Jackery 3600 Home Power Plus with the Solar Sega 500 watt solar panel setup, which is six 85 watt bifacial solar panels. I think that's a pretty good deal. Yes, it is a bit more expensive. Jackery has a good name. Let me know what you think. Give me your thoughts down below in the comments. I always answer comments and questions if you've got them, so don't be shy. And thank you, Jackery, for sending this unit to me to test and play with. I will be playing with it a lot more, so you'll probably see some more info on it coming out in the future. So thanks again for that. And thank you to all my members for being here and supporting my channel. You guys are great. You keep me motivated. So thank you very much. Meanwhile, folks, I'll drop another video just for you right over here. Check it out. And uh, I got work to do. So y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.